opportunity to, to share some of our perspectives with you. I'm from the Committee to Protect Journalists. Uh, the committee protects press freedom worldwide and defends the rights of journalists to report the news without fear of reprisal uh, and ensures that news continues to flow uh, and we try to take action wherever journalists might be attacked, imprisoned, killed, kidnapped, threatened or censored. I also look forward to hearing some of the perspectives of the Ethiopians in the room. I know what it's like sometimes to have other people speak about your country and I'm sure that there's a great deal to be shared. I grew up in South Africa where despite the privilege of my skin color, I was subject to an ideology that claimed to act in my interests, yet denied me freedom of expression and access to information. I grew up in an era of state-controlled radio, heavily restricted media laws, and in an environment where any voices that challenged the status quo were demonized as terrorists. I've seen firsthand how a government sought to silence its critics by invoking the fear of terrorism and banning opposition voices. Thankfully, I also lived to see that things have changed and things can change. There are three key points that I'd like to put before you this afternoon as to why the CPJ is concerned about press freedom in Ethiopia. Ethiopia has been the poster child for development um, with the aid coming in from Western governments. And yet during this time, press freedom has deteriorated. In order to hold free and fair elections, or to hope to try and hold free and fair elections in May 2015, among other things, Ethiopians must have access to a diverse multiplicity of news sources in order to make informed decisions. And lastly, the simple point that silencing critical dissenting voices undermines equitable development and will not build, as uh, Bob was saying, a, a durable democracy. Ethiopia has, as many of you know, a, a proud history of never having been colonized. In recent years, it's enjoyed double-digit economic growth following years of civil war and authoritarian rule. Yet, the country is failing its citizens. It's failing to live up to the commitments both to the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, its commitments to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, and in the words of the Angolan journalist Rafael Marc de Moray, Ethiopia as the host of the African Union should be a symbol of the African Renaissance. Instead, he says, it stands for leading the continent in the opposite direction. Currently, there are 17 journalists and bloggers behind bars in Ethiopia, according to CPJ research. Some are convicted and some are awaiting trial. A year ago, the number was seven. Nine of the new prisoners, as Soli was telling us, were arrested in April this year because they were part of the blogging collective known as Zone 9. The 10th prisoner, Temes Gendeselen, is the former editor of the now defunct newspaper FETA, which was banned in 2012. He was sentenced to three years just last month uh, on conviction of defamation and publishing false news following a column he wrote in a newspaper two years ago. Since 2009, 41 journalists have fled into exile from Ethiopia, according to our research. And this year alone, in the last six months, more than 30 have fled into, Ethiopia, into Kenya. The wave of detention of journalists in Ethiopia started in, 20, in June 2011 as part of a crackdown uh, by authorities fearful of seeing the Arab Spring recreated in Ethiopia. Among those arrested were names that many of you will know, columnist Riyata Lemu, Eskandenega, and newspaper editor Rukshet Tai. In January 2012, a court in Addis Ababa sentenced Riyat and Wubshed to 14 years in prison. On appeal, Riyat's sentence was reduced to five years. Some months later, in July 2012, five journalists living in exile were given heavy prison sentences in absentia. A sixth, Iskander Neger, an award-winning freelance blogger, received an 18-year sentence. Iskinda had been detained on previous occasions and told to stop writing. Uh, a clear warning that he should probably leave the country. He was entitled to be in the US, he'd grown up in the DC area, and he chose not to. Instead, he continued to publish. Uh, 
demanding an end to corruption and pointing out political repression and uh, calling on security forces not to shoot unarmed protesters as they did in 2005. Earlier this year, Eskinder, uh, earlier this month, excuse me, Eskinder celebrated his 46th birthday in Kaliti prison. If he is forced to serve his full term, he will be 62 years old when he's released. Riot is suffering from breast tumors. She, since her detention, she's been threatened with solitary confinement and denied visits from her fiancé and her sister, supposedly because she's too cheeky. Last year, she was honored with the UNESCO uh, Press Freedom Award. Also in 2013, Wilkshed Tai received the CNN Africa Journalism Press Freedom Award. I met his wife and son at the award ceremony in Cape Town last October. His wife told me that her son, often um, after going to visit her, his father on occasions, comes to her afterwards and says, Mom, when I grow up, will I be in jail like my dad? Wilkshed has suffered repeated bouts of kidney infections whilst in prison and he's in need of sustained treatment. Besides the obvious injustice of jailing journalists simply for doing their jobs, the silence and the critical voice of Ethiopia has the effect of di diminishing democracy and undermining genuine development. In the words of Riyad Zaleni, journalists are the voices of the voiceless. Who will expose the unpleasant truths of those in power, if not journalists? Eskinder, Riyot, and Wupshet and others have been prosecuted under Ethiopia's 2009 anti-terrorism law, which you've already heard reference to. The use of the law to stifle peaceful dissent and freedom of expression has been, con wide, has been widely condemned by the US Congress, the US State Department, the UN High Commissioner of Human Rights, and the African Commission of Human and People's Rights. In September this year, a group of UN Special Rapporteurs issued a statement reiterating the need for Ethiopia to redefine its anti-terrorism law and to end uh, free speech and other human rights violations in the country. I won't go into those online bloggers. I think we are ably represented by Soli and, and we can talk more about that afterwards. As you also know, Ethiopia will hold a general election in May next year. The first since Prime Minister Meles is death in 2012. Despite repeated appeals, including from the State Department for Ethiopia to allow freedom of speech and to narrow the definition, definitions of the law, the current government has given no indication that they are willing to do so. In its desire to see a strong and stable Ethiopia emerge in a region beset by factionalism and fundamentalism, the US, together with, with its allies, has poured in millions of dollars into Ethiopia. But despite all these good intentions, press freedom is being shortchanged. As our figures show, more journalists are behind bars now than were a year ago or even five years ago. We should urge the US to use its influence to insist that democra democratic freedoms are integral to Ethiopians, Ethiopia's development. Ethiopians deserve money, no less. I'd like to close with the words of Eskimo Nega, written from prison, days after his appeal uh, was turned down in May last year, and his 18-year sentence was upheld. He wrote, democracy is a destiny of humanity, which cannot be averted. It can be delayed, but not defeated. And then he quoted the Roman poet, Horace, saying, change only the name, and this story is also about you. Whenever justice suffers, our common humanity suffers too. Thank you for your attention.